Hey guys, you're listening to Bit Heroes Radio. I'm World Eater, and I'm joined by my amazing co-host, Bit Verzandi. Hey, thanks, World Eater. It's great to be here with you and all of our listeners. On today's podcast, we'll be exploring just who exactly we are as the hosts of this show, the highly anticipated Tier 20 and Zone 19 coming to Bit Heroes, along with some very juicy leaks that have not been shared anywhere else as well as a viewer cosmetics competition and viewer questions towards the end of the show. So to kick things off, World Leader, for our audience, who are you? Me, I am a content creator that mainly makes tutorial style videos for the Bit Heroes community. I currently have multiple accounts in current tier and even more characters spread throughout the other tiers. Other than Bit Heroes, I personally love to play all other types of games, especially Dead by Daylight. A little about my family, it's me, my loving partner, my adorable two cats, and of course, my two puppers. That's enough about myself. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself, Bitverse Andy? So I am Bitverse Andy, but you can just call me Andy. I'm a new content creator making videos and doing live streams for Bit Heroes, and I've been working on my channel for about four months now. I'm not quite a goaded tier 19 player yet, but I do aim to become one. Outside of Bit Heroes, I do have a small family that's me, my wife, and our two cats. And in my free time, I love to play all sorts of video games. But the one that has always stuck on me as a game I never truly put down has been Bit Heroes. Even after month-long breaks, I always find myself coming back to the game. Anyways, I'm really looking forward to sharing my insights, experiences, and humor with you all. So a little about the show. Bit Heroes Radio will be a bi-weekly podcast in which we'll explore new game features, share insider tips and tricks, and discuss the latest updates and events. We'll also delve into the game's mechanics, history, and take questions from viewers in the Bit Heroes community. Whether you're a seasoned player or just starting out, this podcast is for you. So grab your sword, stock up on potions, and join us for an adventure like no other. This is Bit Heroes Radio. And to go ahead and kick it off for the show, we're going to go ahead and speak about the highly anticipated Tier 20, which was leaked to be called Galactic Trials, giving a space gladiator warrior type of theme. I guess we're going to go ahead and start off by talking about what you should do to prepare for Tier 20 right now. Yeah, so to help prepare for Tier 20 as a Tier 19 right now, we don't always recommend shard stacking, but... If you are free to play, you can definitely consider stacking shards for when the new raid drops so you don't have to drop boatloads of gems on shards. Very closely in line with that, you should also be saving your guild honor to use on zeals for when the new world boss drops. The last thing you should save up is your gems. There will be tier release sales coming in the shop, so make sure you save your gems to take advantage of those offers when they drop. Also, as a quick reminder, don't forget to talk to your guildies or friends about setting up a world boss group. You want to make sure you can farm efficiently as soon as the new content is released. And now to move on to the leak portion of our podcast. So I want to share the leaked lore script for Zone 19. So please dim the lights and listen in. Behold, in Bit Hero's quest, there exists a domain known as the Galactic Trials, where numerous sects of powerful combatants wage war to assert their dominance and rise as the very embodiment of their venerated deities. Each site in this exalted zone is intimately linked to the battlegrounds where these warriors engage in savage struggle and ultimately succumb to the finality of death. One such location is the Tomorian Graveyard, a desolate and mournful place where Tomor, the galactic war chief whose trust was betrayed, bides his time in seething fury, awaiting the chance to take vengeance upon his foes. The Espanior's Coliseum, on the other hand, is a hollowed arena where Espanior, a courageous gladiator, endeavors to claim the title of the greatest champion ever since the enigmatic Gamma Ranger disappeared. Yet another hollowed site is the Fisher Fish Shrine, where the Piscine people offer worship to their divine protector, the mighty Siodon. And finally, there is Rostgard, a clandestine place where the cult of Rostai holds sway over all others, striving to amass enough power to ascend as the chosen avatar of the formidable Firent. 
Such is the nature of the Galactic Trials, where warriors battle to achieve ultimate glory and become legend. Wow, that is pretty epic lore for the upcoming zone. World Eater, why don't you get into those juicy leaks that you've got? Honestly, that was pretty hype. Let's go ahead and move on to the leaks portion of this. Now, for the leaks, I'm going to go ahead and pretty much read over some stuff that we have here pertaining to the new zone and the raid. So to start off, it's going to be one new zone, which is Galactic Trials, with three new dungeons called the Morian Graveyard, the Spaniards Coliseum, and Fisher Fish Shrine. We also have 12 new familiars, which is going to be three common familiars, six rare familiars, and three epic familiars. We are also going to be getting one new raid, of course, which you just recently heard in the lore called Rose Guard. We have five new raid familiars coming with that, which is going to be three epic raid familiars, two legendary raid familiars, and we also have 10 new fusion familiars coming along as well. We also have 10 new fusion familiars coming with two rare fusion familiars, three epic fusion familiars, four legendary fusion familiars, and of course the one mythic fusion familiar. We have 10 new tier 20 gear sets and by that it's pretty much talking about all the gear coming out like the common set of gear, the rare set of gear, the epic set of gear, and of course the legendary set of gear. Along with that we have three sets coming out as well and a bunch of mythic gear to go with those sets. We have four new tier 20 enchants which is of course going to be the common rare epic and legendary variants. We have three new tier 20 accessories one rare, one epic. What's really hype is we're getting a legendary accessory. So that is pretty hype. I hope it's something really good. It might even shake up the meta. Very interesting. We also have 10 new tier 20 materials, which is gonna be one fusion material, four set materials, one legendary material, three mythic materials, and three new cosmetic sets. We have one new cosmetic coming out for the raid, of course, along with 11 new milestones, one being common, two rare, four epic, and four legendary. Just as a very quick disclaimer, since these are leaks, they are not finalized. Please know that the name of any familiars or items that you may see or hear about on this podcast are subject to change. I'm going to go ahead and show you some visual leaks that I was also able to obtain. We're going to go ahead and start off with this first leak, which looks like it's going to be the background of the fight scene in the new raid. It looks really, really nice, and personally, I just always think they do such a great job with these pictures they look really awesome the backgrounds are always nice the animations are clean they get better every single tier i have no complaints for this leak here we do have zone 19 d2 which is of course going to be the second dungeon in the map we also have another leak here which is showing pretty much the whole map and the pathway for zone 19 very nice art and it pretty much shows you that there's one in the clouds, there's one on the land, and it seems like there's some water areas here. So it looks like a bunch of different ones. We might be seeing the element types just looking at this picture. Very, very exciting. We also have a leaked cosmetic for what seems to be the mount cosmetic from the raid. It looks really clean, very robotic. I love all these robotic looks since we don't really have that many. I think for the mounts, we currently only have the ending rover and maybe a few things like the Melvatron mount. There's not many robotic mounts that look clean like this one, so it's a very nice addition. There was also another cosmetic set here that was provided, but I am not entirely sure what it's for. It could be for a sale or perhaps a very, very early leak for the new D4 cosmetic set. We also have the fusions and familiars here. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the familiars. Now, I don't know exactly if they're coming from the raid or the zone. We're gonna start off here by checking out this familiar called Rostai. Honestly, I really do like the look of this. Really cool sword, and I really love the armor. What are your thoughts, Andy? I gotta say, I'm a big fan of that slicked back, fiery red hair. <laughs> the visor is really cool too. Reminds me of almost like an 80s uh, disco vibe, um, but space gladiator theme. So um, I'm a fan, big fan of the hair. Oh yeah, definitely looks very, very clean. Go ahead and check out this next familiar. It's a rare familiar called Non, and they honestly look insanely awesome. I know it sounds weird, but so far, 
out of everything I've seen, this is probably one of my favorite fams that have come out in a very long time aesthetic wise. They just look really cool and I love the fact that they're missing an arm. It's just a really awesome familiar to add to this tier. Your thoughts on this? Yeah, I think he looks awesome. Um, I'm definitely going to say I predict he'll be in the Tamorian graveyard as he is a skeleton. But it looks really cool. I love that he's missing an arm. Definitely has seen battle and uh, ready for more. For sure, for sure. We're going to move on to this next familiar, another rare as well. I believe their name is pronounced Jordy. And honestly, they look pretty clean. They're a little goofy, but I love the wings and the little sword and shield that he comes with. Very, very fun looking familiar. You want to share your thoughts on that, Andy? He definitely looks pretty goofy. <laughs> you know, it puts a smile on my face when I see him. For some reason, I do get like a, a Space Invaders vibe, like the old arcade machine. So very interesting there that he is a space enemy and gives me that sort of vibe. We're going to go ahead and check out this last familiar here. And honestly, they look a little goofy. I love the shell. I like the crown and the little fish looks really cool. Their name is Davidator. And they just look a little goofy for me, but I kind of dig the look. You know, I'm right there with you, 100% goofy. <laughs> I will call out the fish. Makes me think that we'll see this familiar in that zone with the water. Definitely fits the style. All right, and we're going to move on to our first fusion familiar. They are called Cyclets, I believe. They seem very reminiscent of another familiar that I saw recently in the tier 18 raid. So my prediction is that you might want to stock up on those if you plan to make this familiar. They honestly look very mean, very sick, and I'm hoping they're a very, very solid tank familiar. And we are going to move on to Gorgoge, which is going to be an epic fusion familiar. They seem to be taking some more of those other familiars that we've seen in the past, along with something new, I presume. They look very, very clean. I love the color palette they put with this. I love the sword. The eyeball on the hand is really clean, and that bird is just straight chilling on the top. Very, very scary indeed. All right, and we're going to move on to another fusion familiar called Orcus. They seem really, really cool. I love the little red hood they're wearing along with the red cape, and they have a shaman style staff. They look really cool in my opinion. What are your thoughts? Yeah, Orcus straight away gives me old fashioned jester vibes. <laughs> All right, and we're going to move on to the last fusion familiar, which I believe everyone is extremely excited for. And that's going to be Balthai. Balthai is going to be the mythic fusion familiar for the new raid. In my honest opinion, they look extremely sick. Some things that I like about this fusion right off the bat is going to be that really cool pink and the color palette. What are your thoughts? Yeah, Volthai is amazing looking. Literally looks like Rostai powered up, juiced up, supercharged. You know, he's got the lightning hair, the lightning sword, the lightning bracers. It even changes the visor to pink. I think he looks amazing. Really looking forward to him. I honestly couldn't agree with you anymore, Andy. And that's pretty much going to be the end of the leaks portion of the podcast. We're going to go ahead and move on to the predictions. Do you have any predictions that you see coming into this tier, Andy, by any chance? Yeah, so fundamentally with the lore, I think we'll see some sort of alien force invading, like big hulking brute aliens literal space gladiators coming to the bitverse as far as gear and equipment goes we mentioned earlier or that it was leaked there will be some new equipment sets coming i will predict that there will be a sort of accuracy set something that boosts players accuracy maybe something along the lines of a witchum counter there i know accuracy has been sort of a recent focus of the team and i really do bet we'll see something incorporating this mechanic honestly andy those are some really great predictions. If you listeners at home have a prediction that you would like to share, please leave it in the comments below. All right, up next, we're gonna talk about some things that we want to see coming into the next tier. What are some things you wanna see coming into the next tier, Andy? So maybe I'm just a little bit of a Volfi fanboy, but I would love some glowing sword cosmetics or hair cosmetics, maybe even the visor to go with it, just to look a little bit like that mythic familiar. I think Voltai is so awesome and would just love to, you know, get those cosmetics or, or something similar as him. He looks extremely awesome and I just really hope they do something at least with the hair in main hand. That would be really awesome as a cosmetic. 
Something I would really like to see along with tier 20's release is going to be some balance changes to current sets. Currently, Witchum is in meta, and there's just too much that's good about that set. Is it a great set? Yes, but I do think it needs to be toned down a little bit. Their 2 out of 4 has an offensive and defensive property to it, kind of like a pet. When you get hit, you shield self, and you hit an enemy with a 15% chance for both. That's not counting Clover or the new W3 Ancient, so that honestly can stack up pretty high with just those two Ancients. Even without the Ancient, you have a given pet proc. You also have double enchant bonuses. Double enchant bonuses is really solid. I don't think it should be taken out of the set. I honestly think if there are any changes, I would just try to keep it either offensive or defensive for the two out of four bonus. Either keep the damage enemy or keep the shield self, but don't have both. I think it's a very minor balance change that will have a pretty decent impact. Currently, which also comes with an insane amount of evade as well. I gotta ask, World Eater, what's the deal with that evade? Well, evade actually negates damage from incoming hits. The base evade chance for players and familiars is actually 2.5%. Wow, so heroes can negate all damage when they evade? That's awesome. Thank the Bit Heroes Wiki team for supplying this week's mechanic highlight, evade. Please visit the wiki using our link in the description below. All right, welcome to our in-game cosmetics competition, Fashion Hero where we will be showcasing the latest and greatest looks from our amazing community of players. We've received some amazing submissions, and now it's time to vote between our lucky chosen two competitors. To cast your vote, simply head to the comments section below and leave the name of the player with your preferred look. The winner of this competition will have their look featured in our next episode, so let's get voting and see who will be crowned this week's fashion hero. Today's episode entries are coming to us from JJ Stook and Dylon. You can see JJ Stook on the left here, rocking the Grim Reaper blood look, riding on a fat Yeti, which I love. And Dylon rocking the alien look, which is very on theme with the upcoming space themed Galactic Trials Tier 20. To be honest, Dylon has a very sick look that is very reminiscent of what we just went over for the Galactic Trials. I really do think his look is on point. However, I do love JJ's look because Fat Yeti, believe it or not, is one of my top three favorite mount cosmetics. So he automatically has a win in my heart. What's your favorite? <laughs> oh, Fat Yeti does give major bonus points to JJ, but I think just the tentacles, the space rover, I'm just going to have to go with Dylan on this one. <laughs> uh, leave your votes in the comment section below. Thank you for participating and may the best luck win. All right, and we're going to move on to our viewer questions segment where we answer your most pressing questions about Bit Heroes. We love hearing from our audience and each week we'll be selecting a couple of questions from our viewers to answer on the show. To submit a question, simply leave a comment below or send us an email at bitheroesradio at gmail.com and we will give a quick shout out to the viewers whose questions we answer. So whether you're struggling with a particular challenge or just curious about a topic, we're here to help. Don't be sad if your question wasn't chosen for this episode as they still may be used in a future show. Let's get to those questions. First ever question comes to us from I My Chocolate. They ask, is there an easier way to get netherworld boss materials like demon juice for example thank you in advance for the answer well actually yes there is you can farm demon juice starting from tier 4 i believe all the way to tier 13. instead of challenging netherworld boss at the highest tier and heroic difficulty you can actually challenge it at any tier on normal difficulty and a little fun fact to go along with that Item find rate does not impact world boss material drop rates. So whether you're on normal, hard, or heroic, Demon Juice will have the same drop rate. All right, and we're going to move on to our second question from Jaybird here. They ask, is it better to use bit gores throughout your journey to top tier or save them till you hit top tier to get all the materials and sets? Really good question, Jaybird. So I will say early game bit gores are not very necessary and could be considered a bit of a waste. You can fairly easily fly all the way through tier nine or tier 10 with fairly basic gear, such as just epics and normal legendaries. 
However, after then, as you start to approach the double digit tiers, you will start to need to rely on better familiars and some set equipment. Once you need those, Bitcores become a lot more beneficial. So I would recommend you save up to the double digit tiers when you start hitting those power walls to really get the most out of your Bitcores. And that's pretty much going to be a wrap for today's episode of Bit Heroes Radio. We hope you enjoyed our conversation and learned something new about Bit Heroes. But before we go, we want to remind you to subscribe to both of our channels so you don't miss on the next episode of the show. Leave a comment and let us know how we did. And don't forget to vote on your favorite cosmetics shown today and leave questions you would like answered in one of our upcoming videos. As always, we love hearing from our audience. So feel free to reach out to us in the comments or send us an email at bitheroesradio at gmail.com. Thank you all so, so much for your support. And we can't wait to bring you more great content in the future. Thank you for tuning in and we'll catch you next time.